The way I would have let him sit in the waiting room until he passed out. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka Geek XX Chic, and we're back with another reaction to Cobra Kai. We're now into season three. We're getting ever so closer to the latest season. And uh, this is episode one, which is called Aftermath. And that is obviously an apropos name. We ended season two on a really sad note overall. We saw there was the rumble of the high school that happened between Cobra Kai students and Miyagi-Do students. And it was something that had been kind of simmering over the whole summer, but came to a climax when uh, Tori decided to challenge Sam in front of the entire school over what she perceived to be a betrayal over Miguel. And of course it just erupted and the ripple effect was pretty bad. But in the end, we saw that poor Miguel ended up going over a balcony and falling, it looks about two stories right onto his back. He's not dead, but we know that it's it's serious, right? You can't take a fall like that and not have some pretty serious injuries. Of course, this caused a lot of kerfuffle. A lot of the parents now are very worried about what this is doing to their kids, how this rivalry is affecting them. And as a ripple effect, we see that Johnny is real like he's just reeling from this whole situation because he can't believe that things got this serious. And that's where Johnny gets the realization that Kreese has taken over Cobra Kai. He finds out that Kreese behind his back went, put the lease in his name, put everything back into his name. So now Cobra Kai is technically his and a handful of his students who feel like Johnny's been a bit of a hypocrite this season have decided to follow Crease and continue to, you know, be uh, trained under him. So Johnny now feels like he's kind of lost everything. Johnny's definitely not in a great place right now. And of course, Daniel's not feeling too great either about the fact that his daughter got hurt and that really karate has been given kind of a, a bad name in the Valley now because of his rivalry with Johnny. So we're really going to be coming into this season with a lot of the deeper emotional and mental things that they need to start considering that have been kind of building up over the last two seasons. So I'm ready to jump into this episode, but before I do, if this is your first time to my channel, welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Hopefully you like it here. And if you do, you'll think of hitting that thumbs up button. It really helps with the algorithm, which helps me out a lot. And I appreciate it a lot. And if you have been here before, welcome back. Thank you so much for coming back. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, please think of doing that today. I love having more people join the family. We're marching on to 10K. I'd love it if you were there with me. And that goes for you newbies as well. If you really like it here and you want to be notified of these episodes, as well as many other shows that I react to, please hit the subscribe button and join the fam today. All right, that out of the way, guys, let's get into episode one of season three right about now. Yeah, yeah, that's traumatizing. Now I gotta worry about karate gangs in the schools? <laughs> yes, Moon, you teach them, you tell them. We they should have just been singing kumbaya with you and getting 420 friendly instead of this nonsense. I'm kidding, don't do drugs, kids. I'm starting to creep out the customers. All right, well, tell them it's time to go. Why does she have to do it? All right, I'll handle this. I was about to say, can you not send the smaller female to go to the drunken man? Oh. When's the last time you showered, go? Right? Like, if ever? Here you go, homie. Oops. <laughs> That's my bad. <laughs> Don't do it, Johnny. <laughs> oh, Johnny. She's not going to be satisfied till you go to jail, huh? Your form may not be exactly the way it's supposed to be now that you're drunk, Johnny. Not to mention, you know, one of these mofos might have a gun one day, so maybe don't. I, I can't feel sorry for you, Johnny. I know that you actually wanted that beating because you're self-destructive, but come on now. This is not getting you anywhere. You've been drunk for what, days now? Is it solving anything? And karate saved me. Bullshit, I heard you were the real bully. Parents, please, can we please? Stingray, was that you? Well, some dinosaur Freddy Krueger nearly tore her face off. She was tramping around with that other girl's boyfriend. Okay, no, 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 Excuse that's- me? Wow. Uh -huh. oh, <laughs> She's like, say that to my face. Sadly, this isn't the right time to talk about it. Like too many parents are going to be upset, especially if they were collateral damage, which we didn't see a lot of in the video, but, or in the last episode, but it's so easy, right? Parents just get so frustrated with things that it's just easy for them to throw the blame on something. And even though Daniel's right, karate is not the problem. No one wants to hear that right now. They just want a scapegoat and he's rich and he's successful. And we all know that there are people out there who just love when people like that finally get in some kind of trouble. Your son's the one that kicked that kid off that balcony. 
gets to Garvis doesn't fall far from the truck. Robbie's nothing like me. Wow. I hate when cops or anyone does that. Tell that to the kid he killed. That was a lie. But after two weeks in a coma, the coma usually wins. Yeah, see, that's not the same as saying someone's dead. You can't say that, sir. People have been in comas for like decades and come out of them. You better shut your mouth. You really want to go back to school, sis? I'd want to transfer. We have real security guards now, not a stingray. Thank you. So if anybody gives you any trouble, just come to me. I'm the guy. Who wants the bed and got kicked into that trophy case? Boop! Oop! You gonna beat up the girls now, Hawk? Hey, Dimitri. That's right. That's right! Check out my new lip book. It's a lot of hard-hitting shit in here, you know what I mean? <laughs> ah, ah, he's witty. We like it. Ooh, PTSD is real. Oh, easy there, Captain Marvel. Same team, remember? Well, you should maybe just not touch people. He really needs to learn to respect people's personal boundaries. <laughs> you can't just be putting your hands on folks. I got something on my computer you gotta see. Useless. And don't worry, it's not porno this time. I, I, this time? Ew! Uh, he still works there. I, however bad he screwed up, he does care about this family. Oh, Which doesn't mean he way. should work for you. I love you so much, my baby. Mm. I feel bad for Carmen. I mean, shouldn't you be sterile when going into a hospital, sir? You look like you're probably carrying every natural disease right now. Can't you make an exception? Those are the rules. Can't you, uh, you know, break the rules? With you looking like that? Uh-uh, sir. You're not cute. You just don't know the definition of low-key, do you, Daniel? You're just driving out here with your Audi in a full suit? Oh, look what you just found. You're low, Jack, because the boy's smart. Hello. You're Dr. Nguyen, huh? Oh, God, here we go. Liar, liar scene. Seriously? I think I need to see a doctor. The way I would have let him sit in the waiting room until he passed out. Wait, wait, wait why aren't you in school? Trauma. Fear. It's different when you're a girl. I mean, even if you win, you're not cool or tough. I think you're crazy. This is so true. The double standard sucks. Women don't get to be strong. We're just crazy or butch or not feminine when we do anything that's really strong. All this started before you were even born. Amen, Daniel. I thought we were the good guys. <sighs> we are. Depends on the situation. Good guys is all about intent. Doesn't always necessarily come out in action though. Can't run away from your problems. Facts. And I can't run away from mine. I really like that Daniel always like puts himself in the same shoes as his kids. It's such an endearing quality as a parent because a lot of times parents like to act like or think that they have to be above their children and above their mistakes. But letting your kids know that as an adult, you still screw up is one of the best ways to connect with them you ever could. So kudos to Daniel. This sucker's been bothering me a little bit. A little bit engaged to take care of that, right? Oh, wait. Yeah. Here. You've probably lost your kidney. Hold on. You just let people walk in the ICU because I'm pretty sure you can't just do that. Usually very restricted unit because people require a lot of extra care. But I failed you. Not as much as you failed, Robbie. I think it's interesting symbolism that they keep showing that he's just repeating the, all these you fights in his head when he's technically fighting for his consciousness and to get himself back from this really bad place. And up until, you know, he keeps losing these battles in his head too, right? So that's very symbolic as well. What the hell? Mm-hmm. It's like he We're fell close. into a time warp of hell. Why does this man leave the door open when it's clearly past opening hours though? That's weird. It must really hurt to see the Miyagi name dragged through the mud. Wish I could see the look on the little bastard's face. Okay. You know what? There's knives on the wall. Let's finish this now. That little bastard kicked your ass. Exactly. More than once. Mm-hmm. You can't ever unchange that. Ever. But this time, Johnny and I will finish it. Johnny and you? You can't fight me by yourself, Grandpa? Something to say? Something? Mm -hmm. Say it to my face. 
Hmm. I got a lead on Robbie. Finally, Olive Branch. Maybe you'd like to help. That was, that was a big step. Very big step. I know that was hard for you, Daniel. Don't they have an elevator in oh. this school? <laughs> That's right. You remember you won that fight, Sam. Come on, Miguel. You've had a long enough nap. There you go, boo. Those beautiful baby browns, as Mama LaRosso would say. All right, guys, that was the first episode of the third season of Cobra Kai. And yes, it was uh, to see all the fallout of this fight and how things have changed. You know, if this had happened, something like this had happened in the 80s, I think we would have had a somewhat similar um, response. But because we're in a world now where everything you saw last episode, that people had their phones out, everything's recorded, everything's put out there, the news gets to have their say on it, everyone's going to put their spin. So, of course, this has become a community issue, a school issue now, instead of just this Miyagi-Do versus Cobra Kai. And obviously it went, it got way out of hand. There's no questioning about that. But as I said at the beginning of the episode, you know, we see some parents who are just looking for something or someone to blame. This often happens when bad things happen in schools. You know, they're, they're trying to find a fall guy. Is it the school for not intervening? Is it, you know, these kids who come from a certain area or a certain ethnicity or background, or is it lessons or the video games? Or, you know what I mean? Like people are always looking for a scapegoat other than looking at the real issue here, which is that a group of kids, not all of them, a group of kids chose to to engage in behavior that they knew was wrong and the qu consequences were dire. And rather than painting the entire situation as everybody's bad or karate is bad, like karate has been around longer than high school, right? <laughs> and it hasn't been out here causing no trouble. It's like, can we separate? Like the, the art form, the martial art has nothing to do with how people choose to use it, right? No one walks around saying that knives are the instruments of the devil because some people have been used, have used them to murder people, right? People also use them to cut their vegetables and make meals and you know eat but there's some people who choose to use them for violence does that mean knives are evil right like we're talking about a, an instrument or a a method here but who chooses to wield it and how they choose to wield it is a completely different situation and again in its purest form karate was never meant to be an instrument of pain and destruction it was meant to be an art that also allowed for self-defense and so, of course, the you know, obviously the, the generic person out there probably doesn't know this and probably doesn't care. But the whole thing is that, you know, Daniel trying to defend karate in that moment, unfortunately, was not really what was needed. At that point, there's just a lot of angry and scared parents. Understandably, you hear about a kid being hospitalized. You're worried if your kid's going to be next. And even though they didn't talk about it in this episode, we know this is based in the United States. And we all know that, unfortunately, schools are far from a safe place in the U.S. and haven't been for a long time. I mean, there are a lot of things that get kids hospitalized or even dead, unfortunately, in a lot of U.S. schools. So I completely understand why parents would go straight into panic mode at the idea of something that could do something like that to their kids. So it's sad, but you know why they're so upset. And I said, unfortunately, it's not the right time for Daniel to try to defend karate or even defend his dojo at this point. The best thing is to kind of look at what are the solutions? Like, what can we do to make sure that this doesn't continue to be an issue and to deal with the fact that there are some kids who are bullying slash being hyper aggressive because they feel like they're untouchable because of this karate, right? So, so the other issue obviously too is that Daniel, you know, Miyagi-Do is taking the brunt of this because Robbie was his student and his student is the one who did the most, oh, actually it's not true. So did Dimitri. <laughs> Dimitri, um, you know, his students kind of did the most damage, right? They kicked um, the, the butts of, karate, of Cobra Kai. No one seems to be mentioning the fact that Tori's the one who actually started the fight and actually, you know, actually instigated it. But as it goes, these are the way these things get spun. And, you know, it, it is painful for Daniel to know that Miyagi's name is the one being not just his, also LaRusso, like they said, there no one's coming to their dealership. Everyone's trying to find fault with them. And so this is obviously very dark and sad for, for Daniel because, of course, his mentor's name is being sullied, but also people are looking at him like he's this hyper-violent person. These are all things that could have been avoided, but his mistakes and his eagerness to try to defeat Cobra Kai are part of the reason this happened. Of course, as I said before, Kreese was a huge catalyst to a lot of this, but, you know, Daniel engaging and letting Kreese goad him, just like Johnny, is another, other, sorry, is a major factor in why they're here now. And so, as he told Sam in that really nice speech, He's going to have to start owning up to what happened. Same with Sam. Like she's going to have to go to school eventually. And she's going to have to deal with the fact that some people are going to say what they're going to say about her and that some people are going to look at her differently because of this, but <clears throat> it can't be changed. 
All she can do is go forward and show by her actions that she's not whatever they might think that she is. And Daniel's going to have to figure out a way to start tackling this issue differently because the way he's been doing it has not been working. And we saw that he made the first step to doing that differently by going to Johnny and saying, look, you know, in the, in the past, he would have just tried to find Robbie on his own and try to leave Johnny alone. But he was like, no, you know what? This is Johnny's problem too. And we have to work together because alone against Crease, if we both come at Crease from different angles, we're just going to get our butts kicked in different ways. So I really like this episode. I think it was a great way to show how these things can spiral out of control and how everything is still very much kind of teetering in the balance. But thankfully, Daniel has, you know, kind of got his head screwed on back right again. And now it's up to Johnny to kind of stop the self-pitying spiral and start getting, you know, pulling himself up by the bootstraps again and figuring out what he's got to do in order to start taking the right steps to going in the direction he kind of was before Kreese showed up. So this was a great episode as usual. I love going through it again and I hope you enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next episode.